dear friends today we will look into the nature and purpose of the holy spirit in our lives when we look up, look at the history of salvation there is something very interesting about how the trinity the trian godhead has played its role in different times during the salvation process in genesis we see how god the father created this entire world the entire human race by the power of his words and once the trinity had created mankind created the whole of this creation we know how man rebelled against god and then onwards god started working on how to gain regain what was lost how to restore the universe and as per his plan the second person in the trinity jesus the word incarnate came and restored whatever was lost back to what god had intended and once he did that he returned and what what did he do after he returned he sent the third person of the trinity the holy spirit 2000 years ago on pentecost day the holy spirit came and from then on the spirit of god has been with us and if we see this we see how the trinity has been continuously working the father did his role the son did his role and now the spirit is doing his role what was the purpose of the spirit if we look at the way jesus has has taught us to love and to forgive and to sacrifice our lives for the glory of god we see it is not humanly possible until and unless god also helps us to do it and jesus knew this better and that is why he promised in the book of john the helper and this help that he gave through the holy spirit we receive it on a daily basis if we speak about the holy spirit there's lots to speak these few minutes are not enough for it so we we'll look at one aspect of it wherein jesus in the book of john chapter 4 24 he uh, speaks to the samaritan woman and says god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and and truth when we hear this we often realize this work that we are called to do the life we are called to spend with the lord while on earth this is something we should be doing with the help of the holy spirit the help that the holy spirit gives us is in various forms in the in the manner in which we can pray in the manner in which we can decide about our life but primarily the most important aspect is how we fulfill the will of god and save our souls through all this struggles that we go through in our daily lives we know in the book of romans chapter 8 saint paul uh, speaks to the romans and says if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you he very beautifully describes how even jesus once he was dead he was raised up by the power of the holy spirit he was raised up by the power of the holy spirit by the will of the father that's right says in the second part of the scripture he who raised christ from the dead which means the father in heaven he willed that his son be raised so he sent his spirit into the body the dead body of jesus and rose jesus's dead body to life so saint paul says he who raised christ from the dead that is the father who raised christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you which means the same spirit dwells in us also how did the spirit start dwelling in us through the sacrament of baptism we all received baptism and through that sacrament we received the spirit of god into us so if the same spirit had given life to the dead body of jesus then we can 
understand how powerful a spirit has been put into us. Obviously, God also wants to do powerful things through us. And if that is the level at which God is seeing us, then obviously, when Jesus in John 4.24 said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth, it was not just uh, about praying and meditating, but it was more than that. It was to transform us into the image and likeness of God. So if the spirit is so powerful and he is to dwell in us and to do something powerful as transforming us into the image and likeness of Christ, then this should be something that, this, that should be visible in us. If the spirit is in us, the spirit will show it the Spirit's nature, the character of the Spirit. And this is described in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It says, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you see, there are nine of them, but the word used here is the fruit of the Spirit. We know how in English, grammatically, that's wrong. It, we, it should be fruits of the Spirit. But it's not fruits, it is fruit, which means all these nine put together is one fruit. So if we do not have one of these, suppose I say I don't have self-control, I can't go to Jesus and say, Jesus, of all the nine fruit, I have eight, and the ninth one I do not have. I'm not good in having self-control, then essentially I'm telling Jesus I am a failure when it comes to bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Now that can sound very difficult. That will sound difficult because humanly this is not possible. Now this is where the Spirit comes in, the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. He is here to help us in this. And if He helps us, then this is very easy for us. Now, when, when we think of this help, Jesus says in the book of John 14, 26, the ad advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So the Spirit comes to remind us and teach us of all that he has said, all that Jesus has said. If we know of all the teachings that Jesus has given us, if we take a synopsis, if we shorten all that and put together in a small capsule, it is fulfilled in two simple commands that Jesus gave. Love God with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus simplified the entire teaching that he gave into the command of love. Command of love to love God and man with the purest form of love. And that purest form of love is described in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The whole chapter is on that, but there again from 4 to 7, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, there is a synopsis of it. And if we read this, we'll realize it is, a, it is in a way an elaboration of Galatians chapter 5. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth, with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. And the last one, endures all things. If we read this, we'll realize if we are to fulfill this command of love, then we end up bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And this is not just something we do with our ability, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So if we see, this is a check and balance system God has already given us. So it is not that he said, walk on the narrow path, and we and the burden to walk is on us. Yes, we, we have a burden to desire to walk in that path. How do we fulfill it? We fulfill it with the help of the Holy Spirit. How does he do it? He helps us to fulfill the command of love. And when we do that, the fruit will be visible in us. And this is how we become children of God. 
we have faith in god and god in his faithfulness gives us his spirit to us not just commands he is not just speaking words but he is also giving help to us so today when we look at the holy spirit's presence in our life let us all surrender our communion with the spirit the time when we received the baptism and from then on all those great moments in our life where we received his blessings his protection his guidance let us look at it through the through the eyes of love and and have a relationship of love with the holy spirit let's not treat him like a thing he's not a thing he's a person and the person like any other person is able to have a relationship with us so today dear friends i pray that we all unitedly and individually once again commit ourselves to the presence of the spirit within us from where all this power and might of the kingdom the kind saint paul speaks about in the book of romans would flow out of us and give life not just to us but to everything around us god bless you